Hey guys, <laughs> my name is David Philbin, and I'm currently a little bored right now at college, so I've decided that I am going to share my coming out story. I know I look like a douche in this tank top, just uh, ignore it or don't. <laughs> um, I want to kill myself. In all seriousness though, I just wanted to make a video because personally I looked on YouTube for like coming out stories just for like inspiration and whatnot and it definitely helped. It was just nice hearing a person that's gone through the same thing as you. So I decided that I just put another one out there, see what it does, if it helps anyone. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. So here we go. <laughs> so I guess. I sort of had the inkling that I could be gay, into guys, whatever. Probably in like fifth grade, I think like my earliest like memory was from like watching Shark Boy and Lava Girl. I just remember being like way <laughs> more into Shark Boy. Like I was eyeing him up and not Lava Girl. So that was a weird one. And then the other could be being in like the Calvin Klein section at the mall and just like looking at the advertisements for like a creepy amount of time. <laughs> That was, that was another teller. <laughs> so I'd say fifth grade and on, I kind of knew, I thought guys were like cute and whatnot, but I kind of denied those feelings, just didn't really acknowledge them, didn't give them like the time of day, didn't think about it too much. And I was mainly just hooking up with girls throughout both middle school and high school. And it was fine, it's not like I was like completely trying to be someone else, it's just I, that was like my way of exploring. And I know gay people have it in a bunch of different ways, this is just mine. I feel like I discovered that I was gay through hooking up with girls. Like I would just do it and I like it, but like it just wasn't it, if that makes sense. Like I knew it just, it wasn't, what like everyone speaks about when they talk about like hooking up with somebody and like how great it is. I just didn't really get that like spark when I was with a girl. That's how I personally discovered myself. I know there's like gold star gays out there that just <laughs> knew they were gay from the womb and just started kissing boys from the start. I wish I could be one of those, but I'm not. But anyways, I was doing that throughout all of middle school and high school pretty much. And leading up to college, or I'd say like into junior and senior year, all those like emotions and thoughts that I was repressing for myself from all those years, they were finally just flow bone at me. Like I, I knew I wasn't straight. I was trying to convince myself for so long that I was bi and like, I had all these thoughts that I've heard from a bunch of other people too that they're like, yeah, like, I'm like into guys, but like, I could never imagine myself dating a guy. Or, yeah, like, but like, at the end of the day, like, I'm gonna be with a girl. These are just like statements that people in denial usually tell themselves because they just don't want to believe that they're gay. And it's sad, of course. And that's what I was doing a lot in my life. And eventually, whether those like sad thoughts catch up to you in high school or middle school, they'll happen and it's important to address them as soon as you can for your own happiness really. And for me, I, I was always like kind of anxious about whether anyone would ever get the inkling that I could be or not. So I had years of my life where like I would like lower my voice because I used to have like a really girly voice in middle school. It was like intensely high and then I just like went through like some like random puberty transition. I don't know what happened, but now it's this. So nobody like really assumed I was gay at all. Like, I mean, I had, I was just hooking up with girls. I was an athlete. I was just a stereotype of like a straight guy, I guess. And yeah, that made the coming out process even a little bit more tougher because there was just no, nobody had any ideas really. Like it was just like, nobody knew. <laughs> But anyways, that definitely messed with my head a little more. And junior and senior year, I was pretty depressed. I hit it well, but like I was, I was full on depressed. And heading into college, I, I was on the soccer team here. And that meant that I had preseason early August. And then I was heading right into school from preseason and it was all very quick transitions. I mean, anyone heading into college understands that it's a crazy transition. And for me especially, I was just making all these new friends. I was a part of a team and it was tough 
you know, just like making new friends and feeling like you're hiding a part of yourself yet again, as I did throughout middle school and high school. I just kind of hid that part of me or didn't know, discovered it and then hid it from people. And I was continuing to hide a part of myself in college to people that I really care about. And ultimately that just took like a major toll on me. Um, I developed like sleeping issues. I was just like really depressed all up in my head. Um, couldn't sleep. <laughs> so that was fun. And then I pretty much got to a point of depression where I was just tired of it. Like, huh, tired of it. Wow, that was not the joke. But I got to a point of my depression where I was just tired of dealing with it. I was tired of not being able to sleep. I was tired of just like holding a part of myself that is really not that significant. I mean, yes, it's going to be once I tell people, but to me, being gay just was not worth the depression whatsoever, like at all. So I had gotten to a point where I just had to sack up and finally tell some people in order for me to be happy. So that's exactly what I did. <laughs> uh, I started with one friend, with my roommate in college, my first roommate. He was also on the team as well. And I had come home one night. It was probably like 2 a.m. or something around then. This was like November of last year. And we were both just like talking in bed. And he, he himself like had like, like a little issue sleeping. Like he would just pop melatonin, it's pretty normal. But I was just like struggling with sleep like for so long. And I was just like, like why, why do you struggle with sleep? Like just like, trying to like, I don't know, start a conversation or something. And he was like, I don't know, like, it's just always kind of been something I've like dealt with my whole life. And he was like, why, why have you been struggling with sleep? And I was just like, um, I don't know, I'm just kind of depressed. <laughs> you could take some guesses if you'd like. And then he starts rambling this whole like list of things. And he's just like, he, I honestly don't remember what he exactly asked, but there was like this very long list until he jokingly, jokingly was like, you're gay. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then he, he was like, he, he, got, he was just very shocked. He was not expecting it at all. And was initially asking me if I was like joking with him or something. And I was just like, um, no, you're pretty right. <laughs> and then we would go on to talk about that for like, I don't know, probably like two more hours, just like how crazy stuff was at the moment. That was a super surprising moment for him. It was good for me, because at least somebody knew now. Somebody somebody understood what I was going through. That was in November, and break was in December. And that would be when I would be telling like my closest friends, my family. Yeah, that I would say that was the crazy, crazy time. Not in a bad way, just like so much change. I don't know if any of like people go through massive change in many other ways besides like coming out, but like everyone knows that like such massive change requires like a lot of courage, just like a lot of mental strength. And it's like, it was intense. So we'll get into that. <laughs> so when I was back at school, I started with one of my best friends from home and we were in her car going around my neighborhood and I was just like, I pretty much, <laughs> I was pretty much denying that I was gay. I was still struggling with the fact, even though I had already told my roommate. And I was just like, I could like, maybe like 90% of me is like gay and 10% is like bisexual. And she was just like, are you like gay? And you're just like <laughs> trying to say you're bisexual in a way. And I was like, yeah, but at the at the end of the law hour hours of discussing, I finally was like, yeah, I think I'm just like full on gay, and it was a very emotional conversation for sure. It definitely took a lot out of me because change is just like scary. I mean, yeah, okay, I've already said that, but I told her, and then I was going on to my sisters, and 
This was on Christmas Day at night. My sister and her boyfriend had stayed up and I was like, guys, like I have to tell you something. They were just like, what? Like, and I was just like, it's not good. Like it's, it's crazy. Like you won't see this coming. Um, like, it's just crazy. And they were like, what? Like, did you murder someone? Did you, did, are you on drugs right now? Like, did something happen like with Penn? And I was like, no, um, I'm gay. <laughs> and they were just like, oh, like, the, <laughs> they were just like, oh, okay. Like, I thought it was so much worse. Like, that's fine, we don't care. <laughs> so my sister and boyfriend were honestly totally chill with it. Like, I. Honestly, across the board, like, nobody re really responded in a negative way, including my parents, who I told a week or two after. I would say in anyone's coming out process, telling their parents is probably just like the most difficult thing to do. Just because like they raised you, they feel as if they know you the most and you're about to, you're about to really shock them potentially if you, or like me, I guess. <laughs> and yeah, it takes a lot. So anyways, before telling them I was at my grandparents' house with my whole family, we were heading home. I was just with my parents. My sisters decided to stay. I have three older sisters. Could be why I'm gay. But they decided to stay at my grandparents' house and I was just heading home with my parents. The whole time I'm in the car, I'm like texting my sisters. I'm like, I I think I'm gonna like just come out like I think I'm just gonna do it They're like oh my god like what like you have to wait for us to come home I was like okay well like we're gonna be home before you like and then they like immediately leave the house after I tell them that and the whole car ride I'm just shitting it I'm like oh my god like this is about to go down I'm about to tell them this and we finally go on my driveway and we enter the house and I'm like, okay, mom and dad, I have to talk to you about something. <laughs> Could we like go in the family room? And they were pretty much just like, oh no, this can't be good. <laughs> I, I pretty much just like created fear in everyone that I said, like, I have to talk to you about something. They were like, oh God, like what? But anyways, I had sat them down in the family room and I was just like, I want you to know that this semester has been a struggle both soccer wise and just mentally wise for a reason this isn't random why the year has gone the way it has and it's because i'm gay and my mom was like oh and my dad was like okay <laughs> okay he didn't say it like that that was not true he was like he was like oh okay <laughs> and yeah they both had great reactions and then of course my mom starts crying immediately and i i I even told her, like, I, I was, like, still in this, like, weird mindset where I was just, like, yeah, like, I could be, like, 95%, like, gay, I'm, like, 5%, <laughs> like, I don't know why, I get, like, it's crazy, I don't know, I feel like gay people, like, they stay in denial for a while, and, like, sexuality is this thing that's, like, difficult to discover, and luckily I was able to, like, kind of be on the earlier end, I know, like, people come out when they're, like, 14 or 15, just because they've known, and, like, it's... I don't know, like more apparent, I guess. I don't know, but it was an absolute shock to them as well. They thought I had been kicked out of school or was off the team and yeah, it was pretty intense, but it was all good, honestly. <laughs> and while it was super hard telling them, it was like so worth it. Like my relationships with both my sisters and my parents have like only gotten stronger from this time it was kind of it was crazy like it was a like looking back on it it was like such like a fun wild year like it wasn't fun for me really like it was very stressful but like it was a good it's a nice thing to look back on it's like what's gonna happen next year like nothing's gonna be that fun again fun but my advice is that while everyone's circumstance is so different and while mine happened to be pretty positive I know from not just myself, from my gay friends, my gay boyfriend, coming out is just such a giant relief. It's something that we shouldn't have to deal with, but unfortunately we do. But once it is done, I, I promise you it's not like something people regret 
even even if they have friends that leave them or people in their lives that they thought were important to them that go those people just weren't meant for you reactions like that and people like that you just don't need in your life i luckily had great friends great family and the reactions are great and i'm sorry my story <laughs> wasn't that interesting but i just know you won't regret it if you are to do it just be comfortable be confident and i think you could totally do it